I'm just outside of Charlotte Motor Speedway for the launch of the 2025 GR Corolla, now with an automatic gearbox. And sadly, Mark will not be joining me for this video as he's currently taking marriage classes from Dave Grohl. Now, what do you need to know about the 2025 GR Corolla? From a broad perspective, what this is is a mid-cycle refresh. So from an exterior perspective, they've made some changes. And all those changes are on the front. Essentially, you get a wider opening, you get some more cooling, they've done some aero stability changes to the edges of the bumper. On the higher trimmed GR Corolla, the highest trim, you have an additional cooler in the front of the vehicle, and that cooler is optional on the lower trims and comes standard on now the Premium Plus or whatever the top trim is. They've essentially reorganize the GR Corolla trim levels. The poverty model, which comes base with a manual gearbox, is just under $40,000, and fully loaded, which now replaces essentially the circuit, which gets a carbon fiber roof, a heads up display, that extra cooler, is just under 50 with the automatic gearbox. From an interior perspective, other than adding dual zone climate control and a heads up display, essentially the interior space is identical. With that out of the way though, it's time to talk to Sakamoto-san, a gentleman I once bothered two years ago, who has the distinct pleasure of being the chief engineer of the GR Corolla. I'm here once again with Sakamoto-san. Sakamoto-san is the chief engineer of the GR Corolla, and it's been about two years since I last tortured you on camera, so I'm sorry ahead of time. No problem. <laughs> Um, all right, you've done a lot. This is sort of like a mid-cycle update to the Corolla. Yeah. It's not an all-new car. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with drivetrain first. Yeah. Uh, what has been changed? So at first, we implemented a new transmission, which is called GRDAT. So it's an 880 automatic transmission, but it's not normal 880, which was implemented to other Toyota vehicles. We modified to fit to the GR model. What is different about this from a traditional torque converted automatic? Can you walk me through how it works? As the same as the other parts, at first we implement to the motor sports activity. Then we train the transmission. So at first we change the gear ratio. So we made it a more close gear ratio and a wider range. So that uh, you can enjoy the car, uh, change it from the 680 to 880, still you will be satisfied with the gear ratio. And of course, shift is need to be quick. Yeah. So we need to improve the kind of oil pressure response. So we change the valve body. So we will, we implemented the high response electronic solenoid to this 880, and also frequent shifting, and to kind of accept the quick response shifting, we also modify the friction material more durable. Are you, like in other Toyota or Azen gearboxes, mm -hmm. locking out the torque converter after first gear as well, Yeah, yeah, correct? yeah. Um, and the DAT cars, mm -hmm. the automatic cars, all get a separate trans cooler in the front, correct? Yes, yes. Engine tuning has changed, but the internals are the same. You're running more boost pressure now, correct? Yeah. You've, um, when you look at the engineering specs, mm -hmm. you've changed the geometry in the back, and that's, yeah. you said, to improve yeah. anti-squat and anti-dive, yeah. correct? Yeah. And then you've changed the spring rates, so you went to a non-linear spring, mm -hmm. correct? Why did you increase the spring rates and decrease the sway bar side in the back? Is it just for more rotation? Yes. Uh, basically, we want to keep the kind of low stiffness on the rear, but we want to make the rear suspension more flexible movement. So we decided to reduce the sway bar spring ratio, but uh, just to increase the coil spring ratio to keep the low stiffness but a more flexible tire movement to catch the gr grip. In the non, I, I don't even know if you still have a Marizo, but in the variants that we've been driving, mm -hmm. they're all still the twin tube damper setup, mm -hmm. correct? You've changed the internals mm -hmm. of the shock. Why did you add the, the rebound spring inside the shock? Uh, the, to control the kind of rebound kind of characteristic. So without the rebound spring, hit the rebound rubber Suddenly, even rubber is soft, so that creates some uh, unlinear change on the grip. But uh, if we put the spring, transient is more gradual, so you can uh, have uh, some rear inside wheel grip 
more naturally transient during the high speed cornering. And the also, to restrict the kind of rebound stroke, vehicle height will be relatively lower. So, center of gravity is relatively lower than original condition. That makes cornering stability more better. You've changed the logic of your all wheel drive system as well. Yeah. In the past, you had normal, which was 60 40, uh -huh. front biased. Uh -huh. You had track, which was 50 50, uh -huh. and you had 30 70. Uh -huh. Now you have gravel, which is 50 50, yeah. and then your track mode is variable. Yeah. Can you walk through what conditions it's varying uh -huh. and why it's doing it? Okay. So the, we are uh, trying to make it more motor sports focusing setting. So the, for the track mode, so as I saw many YouTube, many people like truck mode, but the other likes 30 to 70 mode on the yeah. truck. It means truck mode is not so sophisticated for all, everyone. So at first we try to improve the truck mode. The one weak point of the 50-50 fixed truck mode is the exi exiting corner. So understeer. Yeah, understeer due to the kind of same bias. So we try to improve that section. Then to improve that, we need to change it to the more variable setting. So after exiting, uh, no, no. So exiting the corner, the truck bias is to the rear, so that front tire can use a lateral G more. So you're going from uh, initially, as you enter the corner, mm -hmm. a little more front bias, mm -hmm. and as you go to corner exit past the apex, it's yeah. more rear bias, yes. correct? For the entering the corner, rear bias meaning free, close to the FF condition, so easy to turn. Then after applying gas pedal, torque distribution will be rear, so that, as I said, more you can use the front tire for the lateral grip. So it's, it's constantly shifting yeah. from as you enter 60 40 mm -hmm. as you leave 30 70 yes. correct but the cha challenge was uh, sometimes it may be a natural feeling for the driver yes. so that is a challenge for us to how we transit the that truck distribution you're trying to make it as linear as possible for yeah, the yeah, driver yeah yeah how are you doing that is it with just a friction circle you're looking at the g load of the yeah, car yeah yeah um <clears throat> my next question yeah. associated with that is um when it comes to suspension tuning, mm -hmm. obviously the US and Japan, mm -hmm. you guys have much, much higher quality roads than we have. Yeah. It's much smoother. Uh -huh. um, one of the questions a lot of people ask is why is the GR so rebound focused in ah, yeah, yeah. ride? Why did you go for that feeling? Mm. So we try to make it a more truck focused vehicle, especially for the beginners. Yeah. So the basic tuning is focusing on the smooth surface track. So of course I understand what you are saying. <laughs> so we have to find a, some kind of compromise. And, and for price as yeah. well for yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. the car is Since car it's a it. kind of production vehicle. So considering reliability and affordable, maybe not so much. Oh. But anyway, so still, yeah, not super expensive sports car. When it comes to cooling, you've mm -hmm. made some uh, big changes. Mm -hmm. uh, you've added another radiator to the setup, correct? Yes. And that's overall just to decrease temps in the drivetrain? Yes. Um, the, the dirty conversation that I, I know you've unfortunately sat through our video, the transfer case in these yeah. cars yeah. gets a lot of heat in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you drive the car quite hard mm -hmm. uh, for safety, for reliability, mm -hmm. it goes off an assumed value that mm -hmm. turns off the all-wheel drive. Have mm -hmm. you now raised that because the car gets more cooling towards the transfer case? Yeah, actually. From the 2025 GR Corolla, we put some additional duct under the engine cover to cool down the transfer case. But uh, still, maybe it may, it may be not for the enough for the heavy user. So we will consider to improve the cooling performance for the future. Understood. Mm. But in the car, mm. just so I'm explaining this correctly, mm. because you do not have a temperature sensor in the mm. transfer mm. case, it is a load assumption based yes, upon here. Yes, assumption based. Yes. Um, what is your, you know, you've obviously you've made updates. To, mm. I, I know you're not chief on the Yaris, but are you trying to keep the same feel between both cars? In the past, you said the Yaris was maybe more wild, and this was more stability. Is mm. that still the same idea for Corolla versus Yaris change? Uh, you're meaning uh, the character, the way the cars uh, feel. As you know, sir, Corolla is the best three car in the world. So very kind of 
more um, entry level sports car, it should be, I think, because four door, four passenger, five passenger accommodate. So I think uh, I'd like to, especially the normal people to enjoy GR Carola, then enjoy the fast race truck vehicle for them. GR okay. car is more stable, yeah. more easy to control. It's about the accessibility, right? People yeah. can get in and yeah, drive yeah. and learn. Longer hoil base and wider truck and uh, easy control AWD. You can drive on the snow surface, dirt surface, and the bus sports car. It is good for them as a fast sports car to try to drive on the race truck. Understood. I really, really appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. And I, it sounds like I'll probably see you in another two years. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. So we're at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the launch of the 2025 GR Corolla. We're in automatic and about to do two disjointed laps around about three quarters of Charlotte to walk you through what they changed and how it drives now. We're gonna be focusing entirely on the automatic because from a drivetrain perspective, the manual car is essentially identical to the old one and the suspension tuning between the automatic and the manual, despite the about 40 pound weight delta between both vehicles, is the same. They've not changed damper tuning, sway bar tuning, or spring rates or steering to accommodate the weight or the different gearbox. I'm gonna activate launch control for my only launch in this car. Let's do it. From a drivetrain perspective, honestly, it's been a little bit since I've driven one of these cars completely stock. Power, you have more torque than you used to, a little more boost, it feels a little peppier, particularly in the down low sections where torque comes into play. We're currently entirely in automatic mode. I'm not going to touch the paddles for the first part of this drive. What you'll notice is this car is using essentially G load and G logic mixed with pedal position to determine whether or not you need a downshift. And what it's doing is mostly keeping you in the right gear. I'm gonna tell you, when they told me that the GR Corolla, or when I first heard the GR Yaris, was going to get a torque converted eight speed automatic from Toyota or Azen, I wasn't the most excited I've ever been, to be honest. I definitely feel like I noticed a pretty substantial lowering in T levels, but honestly, it's doing a pretty good job out here. It knows what gear to be in. You're not doing any hunting. And now I'm going to put it in the manual. It allows you to ride the limiter as I just did. Commanding a downshift. Back on gas, settling the car. You know, this is may not be necessarily as sharp as the dual clutch and say a Golf R, but honestly out here at least, I don't really notice any considerable cons. Essentially, I've done maybe five or six laps before I did this drive in this car, and I've played with the gearbox throughout the day, essentially. And it, it, it doesn't deny you shifts. The only time I've had it happen is when you were full throttle and a gear too high, you wouldn't want a downshift. But once you get off throttle, it does a really, really good job knowing where it needs to be all the time. For this lap out, I'm primarily gonna be talking about the dynamics of the car. I put it back in manual. Commanding some upshifts. This thing does do a good job sort of bump shifting you forward. Again, this is not an edgy car. As the Toyota engineer talked to me off camera, this is supposed to be, I had to say, baby's first track experience, but it needs to be an approachable car. So the way you drive the Corolla hasn't changed from the early one. Essentially, you set yourself up for a corner, you get the brakes to turn in the vehicle a little bit, you set on the gas to stabilize the car, you get a little bit of rotation based on lifting. So here, lift. Nose comes in, get back on gas, car starts accelerating, pulls you through corners. It's very, very easy to drive. They did their best to eliminate some of the understeer factor of this car or neutralize it further. 23s and 24s, particularly the non Marizo cars, so the cars with the twin tubes, had a predominantly under steer, mid corner feeling. This car is a little bit more neutral. 
I, I can't say I notice a huge difference in weight transfer <laughs> as I hit a cone here. <laughs> I can't say I notice a huge difference in weight transfer in the car, but you know, it's I'm trying to think the best way to say it. it. It feels like a very, very easy car to drive most of the time, if not all the time. It's very approachable. It's not going to step out in a big way. These brakes are definitely getting a little soft from uh, everything we have uh, done to it, along with the probably 30 journalists that have been driving this car, as I just experienced. But yeah, past that, I think I'm going to wrap this up and head into the final thoughts. Look, I've turned Mark into a dog, so he's more compliant. Final thoughts on the 2025 GR Corolla. Huge thanks to the chief engineer, Sakamoto-san, who I tortured for two days, asking endless questions about an automatic three-cylinder, along with all of the Toyota USA PR people like Brianne, Paul, and of course, Nathan. So what about the car? Well, as you can clearly tell, we didn't get a lot of time with it. I think I did eight or nine total disjointed laps on Charlotte Motor Speedway, and I got about an hour drive home in it in traffic. What I will say is all of the changes that have been made to the suspension are fairly subtle. If you are in a 22 or 23 and you're putting around on the street, they feel largely the same. On the track, the changes are fairly subtle. While they do make a difference, this car is a little less pushy than it used to be. And that's sort of the takeaway I have on this vehicle. When talking to Sakamoto-san, in short, the GR Corolla was designed to be a highly approachable, somewhat affordable sports car. It's sort of baby's first hot hatchback track car. So it's if you're used to a more edgy vehicle, it's fairly nerf feeling, but it's not a bad vehicle. When it comes to the drivetrain, the eight-speed automatic is very, very competent. So I joked about it in the drive when I heard automatic three-cylinder front-wheel drive-based hatchback, my T-levels dropped to record lows. But actually, after spending time with it, it's pretty good. And all you have to know is they're using it in motorsports application, for real, which means it's good enough. And I think that's sort of my takeaway in this. And a lot of the changes they made to drivetrain, like no longer allowing you to put it in 3070 fixed or 5050 fixed for track driving, doesn't really matter. I never missed it behind the wheel. It just makes this a more dynamic, more capable car. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.